Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. In today's episode, I wanna talk about toning prints using organic materials. And this is something I've wanted to get around to for a while and I think it's a lot of fun. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some darker prints that we made and experiment with some household items for doing kind of stains and toning and such. Uh, we're gonna be using tea, we're gonna be using coffee, and I'm gonna show you some of the materials you might, might consider using as well. Um, before we get rocking on this, I wanna talk a little bit about just where toning kind of comes into play with the history. I mean, it's been really around since the beginning of photography. And it's a way of taking just a straight black and white image, um, using some kind of chemical process with it to give it just a little bit of warmth, a little bit of lift, a little bit of dimension. And most of these uh, processes historically have been of a chemical nature. So you have things like selenium toning, you have sepia toning, uh, there's metal replacement toning that people have done. And you should still do all these today, but a couple years ago, and by a couple I mean quite a few, probably about five, 10 years ago, uh, one of my favorite photographers, Tom Burrell, um, I remember buying a book of his called Botanica that's still one of my favorites. And he does these beautiful, a lot of them are pinhole images of plants, flowers. There's definitely a nod to Carl Blasfeld that's going on in his work. And they're so beautifully printed with almost this tan pinkish kind of warmth to them uh, in the white areas. And after doing some research, and actually I met Tom once, and he uses tea to tone. And that sparked my interest in toning. You know, a lot of the chemical toners are really dangerous to use. They require a lot of ventilation. They're not really easy to use in a home situation, but my gosh, tea, <laughs> that's designed to be used at home. So why not try and dip your prints in tea and see what happens? So I did some experimentation with that and I found that there's a lot of different ways you can do it and a lot of different looks you can achieve. And I wanna show you how you can kind of go through some of those today. So this is kind of more application that we're gonna, we're gonna go over. Um, a couple, you know, just general guidelines. Uh, we are talking about darker prints here. Um, inkjet prints and digital prints, you can do your toning, so to speak, uh, in Photoshop or, you know, Lightroom. Room. There's other programs that you can use to make things monochrome and also give them um, sepia tones or tints to them. And they're fully adjustable and you have a lot of control with that in the digital world. And one thing that I really like about doing this with darkroom materials is that it's a little bit different every time. You know, no two prints are exactly alike. And I've talked about this before on the show that one thing that I really like about, you know, old school, more analog types of photography is that inconsistency and the fact that you don't really know what you're gonna get every time. And it's, you know, it feels more handmade in that sense. And so we're definitely gonna be doing some handmade stuff in the show here today. So anyway, um, what we're gonna do is I wanna show you some techniques and some methods. Um, there's no rules to any of this stuff necessarily. I'm just gonna kind of give you some tips on what works a certain way and may work best for you. Um, I'm using warm tone paper, uh, which is important, I think. I'm also using fiber-based. And so I know that this is trickier to do when you have more um, involved with your paper. So if you're using a, an RC paper, especially a glossy one, you may have trouble getting really good um, toning that takes to the paper just because the layer of gloss and whatnot that's on there. So um, I am using, and actually I'm using Ilford. It's a multi-grade. It's one of my favorite papers, actually. It's a warm tone fiber-based paper. It does have some curling to it, but it does take the chemicals, um, excuse me, does take the staining agents that we're using like coffee and tea really well. And so that's kind of just a little bit of guideline of where you might want to start with something like that. But don't take anything I say here as being just, you know, this is the one way to do it because the whole point of this is to experiment and try and do something that's alternative and fun that you're kind of customizing and putting your own stamp on. So what we're going to do actually is I'm, we're going to work in the kitchen today and we're going to make some tea and coffee and I'm going to show you how you can apply this to darker and prints. So come on over and let's have a look. Okay, before we get started here, I want to talk about what we're going to be using today. And these are just a bunch of contact prints that I made. Um, some of them aren't great exposures. We're using these for testing purposes. And I actually printed these. They're contact prints off of medium format film. So they were shot with Hasselblad and just made contact prints. So basically you put the sheet down and put a piece of glass over it and shoot it with light. You get, you know, a sense of what your exposure is. Uh, I didn't throw these away. I cut them up actually and thinking, and I think this is a lesson to be learned here too. When you do work in the darkroom, don't throw things away uh, because it's nice to have prints just to do some tests with. And I think that's important. Um, you know, a lot of times you're experimenting and if you have a really nice print that took hours and hours to get, the last thing you want to do is use that as a guinea pig for further testing of materials. So anyway, these are not fresh prints by any means. I printed these probably about four months ago and they've been sitting in a box and I thought I'd pull them out to use for today's episode. And so these are just various flowers and things that we've shot. And what we're going to do is actually use these to do the toning on. And I tried to pull ones that were the same here so we could kind of see before and after effects or, you know, possibly the differences between tea and coffee um, using a stain agent. So anyway, that's basically what we're working with there. 
Okay, so we're really getting fancy here with equipment and technology here because we're going to be making tea. Um, what I have here um, is actually two pans. Um, one I filled with some coffee that I was keeping in this jar. It's about three days old. Um, generally speaking with coffee and I'm just going to give you like I said no right or wrong way of doing anything but just you know some things to think about um, coffee generally becomes you know coffee your tea either one it's the tannins in here that are going to you know be responsible for most of the staining or the toning that's going on and so generally I found in my experience that when coffee gets old and it gets darker it starts to kind of go bad and actually it goes really good for print so you can get a more rich quality to it. Uh, you don't have to use any kind of specific kind of coffee. I mean you're sure well welcome to experiment with that. I've noticed in general just the cheaper stuff works better. Um, it, with the tea I literally threw some Tetley's tea bags in here and actually I'm trying a little something here. I boiled these yesterday and I've just left the bags in here overnight to try to get this as rich as possible. And so we'll see if that has any impact on what it is that we're doing. Uh, one thing I am gonna do is I need to talk about temperature on these. Um, because both of these things, if you're gonna make them fresh, will come out very hot. I do not recommend I mean, you, again, everything's an experiment, but in general, I think about 80 degrees, so just above room temperature a little bit is the best temperature for toning. Um, you can kind of go too hot and it has strange effects. So I generally don't throw prints in here while this is boiling. I'll, I'll generally bring it back down to room temperature and uh, you know, kind of see where it goes from there. Uh, these are at room temperature right now. So one thing you might want to use if you want to get them up to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, um, you know, which more or less is about 25, 26 Celsius. Uh, we'll see where we are right now. You can use a meat thermometer. This is actually my darkroom thermometer. We're right at 80, so room temperature actually is, is doing okay with these. Uh, you could turn the burner on low and just bring it up a little bit, but be very careful. Um, and that's where thermometer comes in handy. And if you have a kitchen thermometer, that's great. Um, this one is a darkroom thermometer, but you know, you're welcome to use whatever it is you want to use. So the other thing we're going to do is pre-soak the prints, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. All right, so we're really getting fancy right now. What I'm doing here, um, I'm gonna note, I just happen to be working on the stove. The stove is completely off. There's no heat coming off this stove. Um, I just simply filled this pan up with some water and any container would do on this. You could use Tupperware, whatever you have handy. Um, but what I'm gonna do is a pre-soak with the prints for a couple reasons. Um, this is the fiber-based paper and the main reason you want to pre-soak them and just get them wet again um, and you know, maybe like five minutes will do on this, not a long time. But what I wanna do is I want to just open up the pores in the paper just a little bit so that they'll take the stain um, just a little bit better when, when we're doing the toning, uh, particularly with the tea. Um, and you know, I think just in general, I mean, because the water's at room temperature here as well, um, it just makes sure that the, and this, this may or may not have a difference, but it tends to be something that people who do darkroom work are obsessive about is making sure your temperatures are consistent. But really the main purpose of this is just to open up the pores in the paper just a little bit. And so before I do my, my toning, I'm just gonna make sure those are good and wet. So probably about five, 10 minutes and there's plenty. And uh, you know, you're ready to start working. Okay, so what we have here is we have our tea, and this is in just a small tray that I have for, for developing. Obviously a bigger print needs a bigger tray, that should be fairly obvious. And we have the tea on the left and the coffee is on the right in the red tray. And what we're gonna do here is I've been pre-soaking my prints, and so you can tell they're loosened up a little bit. And what we'll do is I'm gonna grab kind of two like prints, and actually I've got three of this one, so this one will make a good a good test because basically that's going to be our print and I'm not going to stain this one at all. So what we're going to do is be able to look at kind of a before and an after on this. And uh, I don't know if this is on frame here, but anyway, that'll give us a good basis for what we're going for. Now, what I've noticed in here is when you're staining or you're toning with tea and coffee, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. So the good news with that is that, you know, sometimes with various printing processes, when things start to dry, um, they change um, and they go darker or they go, you know, go lighter, one of the two. And so that's the cool thing about this is what you're going to see in here is most of these um, is going to be what you see is what you get on that. Another thing I like to do just a little bit here, much like what you would do if you're in the darkroom, doing developer fixer etc is i like to agitate these just every now and then and the whole reason you know and i don't know I, i'm not a scientist certainly um I, I don't know if there is any advantage to this other than the fact that i'm just using logic that if you're using developer um, the developer that's sitting up next to the print is going to exhaust itself after a while so i just tend to do this to keep fresh um, uh, liquid up against the the actual print um, i put these face down just to make sure that the actual print is getting even 
even uh, coverage here. And you can start to see here, look at the, this is the T. We've been in here, oh, I, I'm editing this down, but we this has been going about seven minutes now. And you can start to see that it's going to have kind of a pinkish tan look to it, uh, which is kind of cool. Now I wanna show you the difference with coffee. Uh, right now, neither have been in here too long, and I don't know if you can see the difference here or not. The coffee is a little bit, at this point it's looking darker just because it's a heavier stain, but I think the interesting thing about coffee is you expect it to be a very, very dark brown, even darker than tea, simply because it's the color of the liquid. But in fact, it is actually yellow, which um, it gives almost a gold look to it. Now, this print is largely um, almost overexposed, but you have, you know, these uh, flowers on a white background. One thing you need to know is that the the stain is not, or the toner here, is actually not toning any of the blacks. It's not having an effect on the metals or the silver in the print. It is only having an effect on the paper. So it has a completely different look to it when you have, let's say, maybe if that flower were on a black background, and I have done some toning with those. And in those cases, I really love the look of coffee because it really turns those whites gold. And it has just such an interesting highlighted look to everything that's going on in the composition. And that really looks really cool on darker backgrounds. But, you know, this is just simply my taste. And like I said, you know, your mileage may vary on all this stuff. Um, you know, it's all up to you. Another thing you can consider too, while we're kind of toning these that I might mention it to you, um, is that you can try different materials. Um, you know, coffee and tea seem obvious, uh, but I've seen people get results with red wine that's been interesting. Um, anything that would stain. So, uh, you know, I've seen red wine. I've actually seen people do things with barbecue sauce, which is strange, uh, but it has a look to it. Um, food coloring is an obvious choice. So really just basically anything that you can think of <laughs> that is going to basically have a stain agent to it, ketchup, something like that, you could probably tone a print in. Um, it definitely gets kind of funky if we get into the area of ketchup, but um, you know, hey, experiment and see what you like. Um, and sometimes things surprise you just because it is a certain color doesn't mean that's the color it tones with. And I think you see that with the coffee. Let's bring this up again. And you can see that's really starting to get yellow, whereas the tea is much more mild. It's more of a tan. And you can see the original print back there is totally white. So, you know, I think one thing also to mention here too, in the case of tea, because it is just my preference, the one I like the most, um, is that depending on the print, like maybe that was too long, maybe, maybe I did it a little too much. Um, sometimes just a really subtle effect. It depends on what you're going for. If you just want to warm it up just a little bit, see it, it went considerably darker than the white. So if I just wanted a slight warmth to it, maybe just barely, you know, maybe up two minutes in the tea would be perfect. Uh, and that's it, you know. Um, whereas maybe if you want something that's more dark, um, more obviously stained, more antique looking, uh, then the longer times certainly apply. Um, I'm looking at the clock. These have been in about 10 minutes now. I'm going to let them go just a little bit longer. We'll let them go. Um, we'll let them go. I'm, I'm not going to make you watch all 20 minutes here, but um, we're going to go ahead and go to 20 on these and see what happens and uh, see what kind of an impact that has. So we've been about 20 minutes now, and we're going to go ahead and see what our results look like. And as you can see, the tea, that's about as dark as it's gonna get, and the coffee actually went a little further. Now, if you wanted to get a darker tea stain, there's other things you could probably do, try to make stronger tea, try a different brand of tea, etc. Or you could go ahead and leave it in here longer and just see what happens over time. Um, we're gonna let these dry, but like I said, it's kind of what you see is what you get on here. And you can see the coffee had really interesting antiquing effect on here. It definitely is more yellow, more gold, but I think it's really cool looking. And like I said, when you have it on a black background, it really gives um, quite a striking accent. So what we're gonna do is take another couple prints here and I'll time-lapse these so we can kind of see some different effects. Okay. Okay, I want to do something a little bit different. This is another scrap print I pulled out of the box over there that was part of something else. Anyway, just to show you that I save everything here, um, it, which is really good for experimenting. What we've been doing on these is, our, this is a real toning issue that we've got because we got nice white backgrounds with very little dark areas in them. And what we're gonna do on here is we have an image. This is just some leaves that were on a flower that <laughs> are somehow removed. Um, what I want to do is show you how the whites now are highlighting that image and, and what kind of a look that gives you. So what we're going to do is actually cut this in half. And this is the great part about keeping your scraps around. We're going to go ahead and put that in the tea and the coffee respectively. And we're going to kind of see how these two things have an effect on more highlight issues. You can already see, gosh, I mean, those just got dunked in there and they've already warmed it up, particularly the coffee. They've warmed up those whites quite a bit. So... 
Anyway, it has a very, very interesting effect to it. I'm going to let those sit for just a second, and uh, we're going to just kind of see how this goes. Okay, so we've been about 10 minutes on each one of these, and I want to see where we're starting to look here. As you can see, the T has just, a, especially in this type of image, has a real warm, subtling effect. But notice that the, the coffee gives a real gold highlight to this. And that is particularly interesting to me um, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, the whole point of toning an image, whether you're using chemical toner or in our case here, organic stuff, is to make sure that, you know, you're giving your image a little bit of lift. And there's different effects that, you know, we're going to look at here. And you're really starting to see this in these darker images, how that's going to work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take all this away. I'm going to wash everything off and we're going to come back. And when we come back, I'm going to show you. We're going to look at some differences in these and show how these can apply to larger scale images and your workflow in general. So what's what's cool about it is is that I'm I'm noticing right here, and of course this is just you know my personal taste, and you may develop your own opinion on these as you're looking at them. But personally, the look of tea is something that I like the color better on. However, I'm going to come back because coffee has a very interesting effect that makes it a little harder to work with, but has a really interesting, curious result on it. Okay, and so you know obviously. I really like, if, especially if you compare them to the one on the top, and I'm just talking about the white areas in these prints, these two were lightly done. Remember we did these for, I think it was a minute or less, and it just gives a little bit of warmth. In fact, with the T image, I almost want to lift that just a little more so it's just barely there. So, you know, maybe just a couple seconds in the T, just literally like a dunk and then go rinse. Um, or you could do a weaker T, you could experiment with things like that. But I really like just this warm white that you end up getting from T. And obviously the longer you go, the warmer it does get. Uh, you know, with these two T images here. What's interesting, this, these two right here were the ones that we did, and this was a full 20 minutes plus some change, I think. And note that the coffee, I mean, it's, it's, it is brown, but it almost has a gold tint to it. And I think that's what makes this interesting about the coffee for me, is that, you know, on its own, this is a real solid antique color, and it almost is just too much of an effect for me. But note this, this was that second print that we cut in half. And I'm going to have to mess with this. I know it's wet right now, and you're going to see a little glare on that. But, you know, if we put it together back the way it was, you can see on the same image the two effects. Now, this one was only about 10 minutes. So the T, just because the solid white, notice that this background is completely white, okay? So you have less white, and there is more metal in here. So it did not have the same effect. It did warm it up. So this is why your time that you soak in whatever organic fluid that you're going to be using is important and it's going to vary from image to image just depending on the level of detail the amount of white um, all that stuff but you can see that this really had more the warming effect that i was looking at and I'm, i wish i'd cut this a third time so we could see just the plain print but this is a nice warmed up image whereas the the one on the the right here that went in the coffee is beautiful it has a real gold um, lift to it which i find extremely interesting and the other thing and I don't know if the video is going to pick this up or not but the gold also gave a little bit of warmth which thus gave a little bit of lift in some of these areas that weren't completely black down here and so it really added a little more depth to the image and also has the effect of maybe opening up that image just a little bit as far as the dynamic range that you end up getting now that's very non-technical and it's not really doing that and you know this is not compressing dynamic range it's not zone system it's not hdr or whatever you want to call it but it did just bring a little more attention into the fact that there was a slight gradient in the black there and I, I think of, based on our results today this is another image it's really dark um, and it also supports this theory this was done in coffee as well and this was done a while back, close to when I printed these. Um, this roll came out underexposed, and I had made a mistake. I was using a flash, and I did not have the sync set correctly, and so a lot of these images were underexposed. However, once treated with the coffee, it does give kind of a beautiful dark image to it, and it did bring up a little bit of accent. This flower is supposed to be completely white, and you can tell it's underexposed. You know getting into coffee on that I actually am saving these negatives and I want to do a large scale print like that and the idea is to go in and stain it with with coffee in that that instance so anyway interesting stuff and I you know I hope you use this as kind of a springboard for your own experimentation and some things that you might like to do and you know those are the two liquids that I showed you today were tea and coffee because that's what I use the most and what I really like the results of but like I said sky's the limit you can come up with anything um, if it if it stains try it see what you think Okay, so there you have it. We have toned some prints using organic materials. And I hope that 
you'll use this as kind of a jumping off point to do some experimentation with because I think that's the point with this is that it should be fun, it should be interesting, and it should be kind of different. Um, it's messy and it's kind of unorthodox to all this perfection that we try to achieve with photography a lot of times, but that's what gives this a little bit of soul and a little bit of character that I think makes it more interesting. And I've heard of people using really weird stuff to tone with occasionally and you know, don't put limits on yourself. So if you have an idea, work with it and go with it. Uh, I'm fairly conservative in what I do because I just really like the look of coffee and tea for certain applications and they're really easy to do. It's cheap. You can do it in the house. There's not a big mess and it's actually easier than making the print. So anyway, just some things to think about and uh, anyway, that's about all we got for today. Please remember to check out our website, which is theartofphotography.tv. You can check out all our past episodes and vlog editions and more and all kinds of crazy stuff there. And and follow us on Facebook. Um, you'll, you can get the link on the website. So theartofphotography.tv. And um, that's about it for today. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.